Hi, this instructional video for the Shearwater Petrol Nitrox Recreational Mode will cover advanced setup, including the dive setup menu versus the system setup menu, decompression settings, including conservatism and safety stop options, and the advanced configuration menu. So first I will cover the difference between the dive setup menu, which is available here, and system setup menu, which is a couple of extra button presses. Dive setup is available on the surface and in the dive. So this define gas menu is available uh, while you're diving. I can turn off gases while I'm diving. I can edit gases while I'm diving. Okay. Also the no decompression limit planner and the dive planner for planning decompression dives are available while diving. While diving you're not going to enter input parameters. They're just going to calculate the plan based on the current situation and the brightness of the display can also be edited while diving. The, the dive log and system setup are not available while you're in a dive. So we've covered what the mode and the salinity are in the basic setup so I won't recover that. The decompression setup, okay, for the Nitrox recreational mode the decompression algorithm is fixed to the Buhlmann ZHL16C with gradient factors. You can set conservatism in three fixed values of low, medium, and high. The technical modes on the petrol allow editing the gradient factors directly, but here you can only pick from three sets. Low conservatism means longer NDL times and less decompression. High conservatism means shorter no deco times and longer decompression stops. The low values are going to be fairly close to what you'll see in the PADI tables. They're a bit more conservative, but a dive computer should be a bit more conservative than tables. The last stop depth for decompression dives is fixed at 10 feet. The reason for this is it's a mistake sometimes to use a 20 foot last stop depth, especially if you only have air as your decompression di uh, gas. Air has a lot of nitrogen in it, it's not really suitable for decompression at 20 feet. Now, there's the, you can still do your stops at 20 feet in this mode if you want, your last stop. You, you can stay at 20 feet, just don't ascend to 10 feet when it tells you to. Um, it's not going to penalize you for doing that, other, other than staying at 20 feet, your inert gas um, partial pressure that you're breathing will be a bit higher, so the time to surface might take a little bit longer to clear than it shows. Um, because the time to surface predictions assume you're going to be ascending to the 10 foot stop to complete the 10 foot stop. Now safety stops, I've shown all of these uh, demos in the adaptive setting. Uh, you can turn safety stops right off if you don't want them. You can set them also to fixed times of 3 minutes, 4 minutes, or 5 minutes. Or the adaptive setting, which if you've seen the previous videos, you'll know that it's a 3 minute safety stop if you go deeper than 35 feet. If you go deeper than 100 feet, it is a 5 minute safety stop, or if the no decompression limit time drops below 5 minutes, then you will also get a 5 minute safety stop. The bottom row configuration I've covered uh, in other videos. I'm not going to cover that here. I've also covered the nitrox gases in the nitrox dive video. Uh, display setup. The, the units are either in feet or meters and the brightness, the auto setting will auto adjust the brightness for the best mix of readability and uh, battery life. The, when you're in bright sunshine the screen needs to be brighter to compete with the brightness of the sunshine but that reduces the battery life. So what the auto setting does is it measures the surrounding brightness and when you're diving and the brightness is much lower it can lower the screen brightness uh, so that you get longer battery life. So that is what that setting does. You could also set it to fixed levels if you don't want the brightness to ever change on you. You can set it to low, uh, medium, or even high brightness. High brightness will use the battery the fastest. Okay, Altitude, you can't change this in the recreational mode, but you don't need to. Auto will, will handle sea level diving, it'll, di it'll handle diving at high altitude as well. The flip screen you probably won't need to use. It 
flips the screen, obviously. Uh, that's only if you have a connector coming out the side of your, uh, your petrol here. And in that case, if you want to wear it on your right wrist, you have to flip the screen. System setup. Um, shouldn't need to, to do anything here other than the time and the date. Loading an upgrade is for firmware updates. Um, you can also load an upgrade by going through the dive log, upload log menu, because both of these commands do the same thing. What they do is they initialize the Bluetooth connection, and then they'll wait uh, three minutes to connect to a, a PC over Bluetooth. They both, both the commands do the exact same thing. I'm just going to cancel out of, out of this. Uh, I'll show you in, in dive log, you can go upload log, this is going to do the exact same thing. Initialize the Bluetooth and wait for commands for the, from the PC for three minutes. Okay, let's go back to system setup. And the final menu that we're, we're going to go through is the advanced config. In the advanced config, you can edit the main color, set that to green, and you can change the title, title colors as well um, to something else, like for example cyan. Okay, uh, I'll go back to the main screen and show you now my main color is green. You might want to use that if you like things to be color coded so that warnings are red and yellow and the normal state of the display is green. We go back, enter back into the advanced configuration and we'll change back to white because I like white. Uh, end dive delay. This is after you've done the dive and you've reached the surface. The default is that in 60 seconds, uh, your dive will end. And if you if you go back down, it, the dive won't end, and it'll it'll string these surface intervals together into one dive. Uh, if you want to make that that longer, you can make it up to 600 seconds, uh, which is 10 minutes. And some people uh, like diving instructors like that because when they're teaching classes, they'll often have these short surface intervals. If you want to make it shorter, you can make it down to 20 seconds. Uh, and then it will end the dive mode quite quickly after you reach the surface. The battery icon, uh, if you've been paying attention in the in the previous videos, you'll notice that you see the battery gauge when we're on the surface, but once we start to dive, that battery gauge uh, goes away. That's because the setting is set to surface and warnings. If the battery got really low while on dive, I would see the battery icon uh, as a yellow or red warning. Uh, you can change this behavior. You can have the battery icon always show or you can have it only show for warnings. I like the surface plus warning setting and that is the default setting. Now the max depth, this is the kind of the overriding limit of the maximum operating depth for all gases. You can also set a max uh, partial pressure of oxygen for the max operating depth and for the gas it picks the shallower of the two values, the partial pressure limit or this limit and you can adjust this up to 165 feet and that's as deep as we allow you to set this. If you go deeper than that, it's not going to lock you out or do anything, it's just going to be flashing a warning at you saying maximum operating depth exceeded. So we'll, we can set that higher now and I'll show you how, what that changed. If we go into the nitrox gases and none of these gases it applies to because they all have shallower uh, max operating depths uh, based on the PPO2 limit but if I set air up now air the maximum operating depth limit at 1.4 uh, partial pressure of oxygen the limit would be 187 feet but because I've got that other overriding limit and that's due to nitrogen narcosis uh, and also training limits and decompression risk and that kind of thing. It, it's a lower limit than is allowed by the partial pressure of oxygen. And if I if I edit this value, you can see for the other gases, um, it's changing as I allow the partial pressure of oxygen to go higher. But the air is is was fixed at the other overriding limit, and that's why it was grayed out there. We recommend you leave this setting at 1.4 unless you really know what it's what it's doing. A few more things in the advanced config. Um, you can reset the advanced config menus uh, values. We can also view some system info, the serial number of the unit, the features. You won't need this unless uh, unless tech support uh, asks you how your computer. This sets how your computer is set up. Uh, the firmware version is 16. 
the hardware version is 2.0.1. Uh, don't worry if you've got like a 2.0.0. There hasn't been any major changes to the petrol electronics hardware, just minor uh, updates to make assembly easier. The total lifetime dives of this unit is 38 dives for a total uh, lifetime hours of 6 hours. This, this computer only gets used for these short demo dives. Uh, and we can also look at some battery info. Um, it's an alkaline ba battery. The current voltage is 1.37 volts. It's been on for two hours since the last time I uh, took it out and put it in. Uh, it doesn't know the date because I edited the date after I changed it. Uh, if you want to actually know the date, either you don't edit the date because it does remember the, the, the clock date after a battery change as long as you do the battery change within uh, 15 minutes. Um, but it, once you edit the date, it, it loses that uh, unless you edit the date on that very first page after a battery change and, and I show that later. So that is more advanced configuration of the Shearwater Petrol. Thank you. The next video will show you how to view, edit, and upload dive logs.